Hello, sixth grade social studies students. I am Ms. Tolman. I am here to help you read through your social studies work. We are on, in our unit five. We are on lesson two. This is our unit on the Roman Empire. We do have some vocabulary in every single lesson. It's a good idea to take notes as you watch the video. That way you know a little bit more when you go to do the questions at the end as well as the quizzes and you will have that on hand for you to help you out. Our vocabulary, there are five of them. Dictator. It's a ruler in an ancient Rome who was appointed by the Senate to reorder the government. Emboldened, which means made courageous. Pax Romana, which is Roman peace. Princeps is the first citizen of the Roman Republic. Triumvirate is a rule of three men. This is a person you probably need to know. We have Julius Caesar. He's a successful Roman military commander who played an important role in the transformation of the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire. The final years of the Roman Republic. Many of the Roman soldiers that fought to secure Rome's control of the Mediterranean were farmers. They fought to increase the wealth of the patricians. They fought, as Polybius wrote, for their country and their children. However, as simple soldiers, they gained little from the conquests. The riches that were captured were given to the state or hoarded by their commanders. With no resources to plant new crops or pay taxes, many of the former soldiers were forced to sell their land and look for jobs. They found few jobs were available. The abundance of slaves kept many former soldiers from finding work. Without land or work to support themselves, they fell into poverty and began to look to the government for help. Reform efforts of the Graci. During the period of conquest, the Senate had grown in power. The interests of its wealthy land-owning members became the interests of the Republic. The landless and jobless were largely ignored. Resources that could have been used to help the growing population of the landless poor were instead bought by the wealthy. This situation caused many of the problems for the Republic, namely the number of men qualified for mili military service was reduced. To serve in the Roman army, one had to be a land-owning male citizen. Without land, many experienced soldiers could not serve. Realize the impact of the, realizing the impact of the situation on the Roman army, a wealthy plebeian tribute and former military commander named Tiberius Gracius proposed several land reforms. Particularly, he suggested that the public lands be divided among the needy. However, much of the public lands were farmed by wealthy patricians and supplied them with a great amount of money. Tiberius proposed reforms, increased his popularity among the lower classes. Fearful of Tiberius growing power and influence, a group of senators had him killed. Ten years after his death in 123 BC, Tiberius' brother Gauss was elected as a tribune. He tried to carry on his brother's efforts and bring relief to the poor. However, while involved in a riot, Gaius was killed, along with thousands of his followers. The Civil War. The Gracie brothers' death stirred the plebeians to violence. In order to deal with the social unrest and strengthen the army, the consul Marius reorganized the Roman army. He made a military service a choice rather than a requirement. Those that enlisted were to be rewarded with land and share in whatever spoils of war that was captured. Moreover, the soldiers swore loyalty to their general, not to Rome. These reforms made Marius very popular and extremely powerful among the plebeians. When a war broke out in Asia Minor in 80, 88 BC, the plebeian council ignored the Senate's recommendation that Lucius Cornelius Sulla be appointed the top commander. Instead, they appointed Marius. Angered, Sulla marched with his troops to Rome to oppose Marius and the plebeian council. The conflict between Marius and Sulla sparked a civil war. Sulla and his patrician supporters emerged victorious. Sulla was named Master of the People, or Dictator of Rome. A dictator is a ruler that has absolute control over the country. Sulla ru ruled as a dictator for three years, from 81 to 79 BC. The First Triumvirate Marius and Sulla set an example for other military leaders. They proved that people would willingly give up political control to have peace and order reestablished in society. Not long after Sulla's dictatorship ended, 
two other military commanders emerged as powerful leaders. Crassus and Pompey, Pompey were appointed joint consuls of Rome in 70 BC. They had won, had won important military victories for Rome. However, they were not as popular with the people as Mr. Julius Caesar, a successful military commander in his own right. In 60 BC, the three men entered a secret alliance, promising to use their positions of influence to benefit and support the others. However, the, their triumvirate didn't last long. Emboldened by his conquest of Gaul, Caesar turned to Italy and marched on Rome with his army. In the meantime, Crassus had died, leaving Pompey to oppose Caesar alone. Pompey's army was no match for Caesar's experienced troops. Caesar took control of Rome. After being appointed dictator for se several consecutive terms, he was named dictator for life in 45 BC. While ruling as a dictator, Caesar did much to help the lower classes. He provided land for poor soldiers and created government jobs for the unemployed. His popularity made many in the Senate fearful that he would do away with the Republic. In response, he insisted, I will not be the king of Rome. Jupiter alone is king of the Romans. On March 15, 44 BC, Caesar was assassinated by a group of those senators. The second triumvirate. Caesar's death angered many. Those men closest to him set out to avenge his murder. The most powerful among them were Mark Antony, Caesar's assistant, Octavian, Caesar's grandnephew and adopted heir, and Lepidus. In 43 BC, these three were officially recognized as the second triumvirate. After defeating several of Caesar's assassins in battle, the triumvirate divided the Roman Republic into three, three regions. Octavian was to rule the western provinces, Anthony over the east, and Lepidus was to govern Africa. The three men worked together, but each desired to rule the Republic alone. Lepidus acted first on his ambition. He tried to take control of Octavian's army, but was unsuccessful and removed from power. Octavian was next. He turned to the public opinion against Antony by exposing his extramarital relationship with Queen, Queen Cleopatra, excuse me, the seventh of Egypt. Antony was living in Alexandria with Cleopatra, though married to Octavia's sister. Despite the, his public disgrace, Antony refused to relinquish the command of his forces. In 31 BC, the Battle of Actium, Octavian defeated the allied forces of Antony and Cleopatra. The two lovers fled to Egypt, and there, without hope of escaping Octavian, they committed suicide. Without a rival and only 32 years old, Octavian returned to Rome as its sole ruler. The Roman Empire. After a century of civil wars and rebellion, rebellions, the Romans longed for peace and stability. Octavian promised the people he would restore the Republic. To help him reorder the government, the Senate agree, guaranteed him the title Augustus. As Augustus, he was acknowledged as Majestic One, who held supreme power over the government of, um, and military of Rome. This granted Augustus more power than his great uncle Julius Caesar had possessed as dictator of Rome. Though the Senate continued to meet, Rome was no longer a republic ruled by elected individuals. Caesar Augustus is considered the first of the Roman emperors. Pax Romana. Augustus adopted many titles which emphasize his supreme position in Rome. In, the, in addition to the title Imperator, which is commander in chief. He took the title princeps. It means first citizen of the Roman Republic. As princess, princeps, <laughs> Augustus was not merely the leader of the Romans, but one of them. In other words, he sympathized with their hardships as ordinary citizens. Mm -hmm. The Pax Romana, which was Roman peace, was initiated by Augustus' efforts to pr protect and improve the life of the common Roman citizen. During Augustus' reign, 27, to four, 27 BC to AD 14, he established many public services for the city of Rome, such as a police force, firefighting brigades, and flood management. For the whole Roman Empire, he formed the methods of taxation, removing opportunities for abuse by tax collectors. Moreover, Augustus established a standing army that regarded Rome as its borders from enemies such as the Germanic tribes. During the Pax Romana, there was no major civil war, no invasion of Rome, 
no serious rebellions, and no limitations on travel. As one Roman boasted, we may travel at all hours, sail from east to west. The highest point of social and material prosperity of the Pax Romana occurred during the period known as the Five Good Emperors. They were Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antonius Pinus, Pius, and Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was a champion of secularism, or a disconnection between religion and the state. Collectively, the emperors improved Roman law, improved tax laws, erected public works, provided public education, promoted the arts and sciences, increased trade, and enlarged the Roman Empire. Under the rule of Trajan, over a third of the world population was under Roman rule. Its borders stretch east, west to east from the shores of Britain to the banks of the Euphrates and north to the south to south from the Rhine River in Germany and to the North African desert. Huge. This is the death of Caesar. Down with Caesar. And this here is where the Roman Empire, which is now like right here, extended. We do have our vocabulary here. And again, I'm told that these questions are different for everybody, so I'm not going to be reading through them. Um, you can have a look at them first and then go back through and watch the video. You can look at them first and then go back through and read through it. Um, either way, it's a good idea to take notes as you go. Hint, hint. Um, you're doing a great job. Really, you are. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. You got this. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye.